Ocon, could you call the roll, please? Sure. Commissioner Cruz is not here. Commissioner Eggenberger is not here. Commissioner Foster. Good evening. Commissioner Janowski. Commissioner Ocon here. Commissioner Singh. Here. Commissioner Watkins. Here. Commissioner Weber. Here. And Chairwoman Zuber. Here. And uh, Commissioner Cruz and Commissioner Eggenberger will both have both were excused for tonight. Both have excused absences. So, and I also would like the record to reflect that we have Patrick Sloan and Aaron Schluto here from the township and our consultant Sarah Gabus is here with us tonight. So thank you everyone. Um, do we have anybody who wants to make a motion about the minutes? I move that we approve the minutes of the February 6, 2023 Planning Commission meeting. Support. Motion by Commissioner Weber and support by Commissioner Ocon. Uh, any further discussion? All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, minutes approved. Um, Anybody want to mention the, do we have any additions or deletions from staff for the agenda? No. No. Anybody else want to add anything to our agenda? Okay. I move to approve the agenda for tonight. Support. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Ocon and support by Commissioner Singh. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, agenda approved. Um, Patrick, do we have any communications? Uh, nothing to add. Okay, excellent. All right, so we have no public hearings this evening or old business. We're just gonna move right into new business. Item one on our agenda is the Michigan Fireworks Company, LLC, committer, consider a seasonal sales permit for the parcel at 44918 Ford Road. The property is located on the north side of Ford Road between Sheldon and Canton Center, and the proposed use is seasonal retail fireworks sales. Patrick, would you like to tell us more? Sure, thank you. Uh, this application <coughs> uh, is similar to uh, previous years where uh, there's a firework tent in the, uh, in the parking lot of O'Reilly Auto on, uh, on Ford Road and uh, just west of the McDonald's here. And I'll bring up the uh, the location map here. There we go. Uh, so here on Ford Road, there's the McDonald's to the east. Uh, there's O'Reilly's to the west, and in the in the parking lot is the tent. And this is a aerial photo from last summer. So the tent is going in identical location as it was proposed last year and the year before that. So there won't be any changes from the prior year's application. Um, the materials submitted are the same. Uh, the staff recommendations are the same, both from uh, planning, engineering, and the fire department. So our uh, recommendation is to approve the seasonal sales permit. Uh, a couple items to note. Uh, first is, um, uh, even though Commissioner Cruz is not here this evening, he had sent me some comments about the application, um, some of which um, we uh, are directing to the building division and the fire department who deal with the actual permitting when they put the structure up and they uh, commence the use. Um, and they have a state license and permit that goes along with that. Um, but one of the items that Commissioner Cruz noted was that the driveway width is shown as 20 feet on the plan. It's actually closer to 22 or 24 feet. The minimum required is 22 feet, and dimensionally, the, the plans oversize the tent just a little bit. So in previous years, uh, the tent will occupy the parking spaces, but the aisles will be clear. So those aisles will be maintained at between 22 and 24 feet. So um, that'll just be a minor plan change to reflect uh, what they'll actually be putting there. Uh, and then the other item is um, in our uh, resolution, and this part doesn't have to be adopted, but um, last year there were one or two applications where the Planning Commission recommended that if there is a seasonal sales permit in future years and nothing has changed, that they've authorized um, staff approval of some of those permits. Um, so um, that can either be a case-by-case -case basis or, um, or not. Um, so on this particular application, uh, we added to the resolution at the end to authorize planning services division staff to approve 
a seasonal sales permit for uh, Michigan Fireworks Company at this site in future years if there are no plan changes or no future zoning ordinance amendments that impact the site compliance. Um, so if that's something that the Planning Commission wants to grant uh, for this application, the model motion language is written. Um, if it's something that the Planning Commission prefers to see again in years uh, going forward, um, then we'll just omit that from the model motion. Uh, so that concludes our report and we'll be happy to take any questions. Patrick, is the, um, is the sponsor, the uh, come on up to the microphone. I'm still learning my, my way around this, <laughs> the dais here. Hello, I'm Jessica Kanapka, the owner of Michigan Fireworks Company. Add to what Patrick said? Nope, uh, we always respect the community and appreciate the fact that we are able to come into this community and uh, you know we'll leave it in better condition than we found it. No comments, no questions. My question I have, Patrick, is with the, the second part of this too, if we want to have this approved for future years or whether it be uh, administrative, that would be just for this applicant only, right? So in other words, if another fireworks company came in here to apply for this space, they'd come back to us and we'd have to review their plan and all that, correct? Yeah, that's correct. So we had named this LLC um, in particular in future years. So if they were to have a different company, even though it's the same plans, but a different company, that's something the Planning Commission may, may want to look at just because it's a new person or new entity that comes forward. I'll make sure that it's limited to this applicant. Um, so other than that, I'm fine with it. Commissioner Singh? Uh, no questions. Thank you. Commissioner Okan? I'm good, thank you. Commissioner no questions. Feel about the the um, the the part of the motion having to do with this the uh, seasonal sale permits for Michigan Fireworks Company to LLC. Does everyone agree with that? I'm fine with it. Again, with the limitation that I previously mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody have any comments? Okay. Do I hear a motion? I'll take it, Madam Chair. I move to approve one 30-day seasonal sales permit from the Michigan Fireworks Company to LLC. Parcel number 039-99-0025-001, commencing on June 21st, 2023. Subject to obtaining appropriate permits from the Building Services Division for erection of the tent and compliance with all signed regulations. I further move to authorize the Planning Services Division to approve seasonal sales permits for the Michigan Fireworks Company to LLC at the subject site in future years if there are no plan changes and no future zoning ordinance amendments that impact site compliance. Second. That was a very dramatic reading. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I, think you have, I think you have a future in Hollywood where you'd be doing uh, like reading. You guys are so kind. So kind. <laughs> I think he's got a future playing a planning commissioner on, in Hollywood. Um, I second the motion. All right, so we have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Watkins and support by Commissioner Weber. Any further discussion? All right, Commissioner Ocon, could you call the vote, please? Sure. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Janowski? Yes. Commissioner Ocon, yes. Commissioner Singh? Yes. Commissioner Watkins? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. And Chairwoman Zuber? Yes. All right. Very that means uh, summer's right around the corner? Yeah, <laughs> let's hope. No more snow, right, after this? <laughs> All right, very good, so. <laughs> What's that, you're not gonna go? Oh, yeah, everyone. Knocking on a granite. <laughs> yeah. All right, very good, so is there any further, what's the further step for this project? Uh, the next steps are they'll obtain a permit from the building division for the tent and then they'll coordinate with the building division and the fire department for uh, the implementation of the use to make sure they have their licenses and permits before starting business. Awesome, all right. We wish you the best of luck, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. All right, item number two on our agenda is True Storage Canton Development. Consider a site plan approval, or consider a site plan on parcel number uh, 003-99-0008-707, also known as 7444 North Hagerty Road. 
The property is located on the east side of Haggerty between Copernick and Warren Roads. Proposed use is a mini warehouse. Patrick, tell us more. Okay, thank you. Um, the proposed mini warehouse is a special land use in the light industrial zoning district. And the, the Planning Commission recommended approval of the special land use at its January 11th meeting of this year. And subsequently, the Township Board approved the special land use at its meeting on February 14th. And uh, between uh, the January 11th meeting and the February 14th meeting, the applicant had uh, corrected a number of conditions on the plans that were recommended as conditions of approval by the Planning Commission. Um, those were uh, revising some of the maneuvering diagrams uh, to revise the plans to include um, some berm details along Hegarty Road, uh, to correct the lighting plans, to uh, clarify some sign details, and to revise some of the fence plans to be compliant with the zoning ordinance. And so the applicant had done all those things uh, prior to the board uh, review of the plans on February 14th. So with those items being corrected, the board approved the special land use. Uh, so from the time of special land use uh, to now, uh, the plans are substantively the same, uh, including all the corrections that were recommended by the Planning Commission at its January 11th meeting. Uh, since the board meeting, um, some of the corrections have been to the lighting to make sure that the illumination doesn't go off the site according to the zoning ordinance limits. So um, that, that correction has further been made. Um, so the plans are uh, compliant with the uh, zoning ordinance and uh, our recommendation is approval of the plans. Um, there's uh, one item that we recommend for a modification and that's from the foundation landscaping on the north and south sides. Currently the site doesn't have foundational landscaping on those sides and it has parking and circulation in those areas. So compliance with the foundational landscaping on those sides uh, to do it to a site that's already built like this uh, is impractical. So we recommend that a modification from the foundation landscape requirements be approved. And that required foundation landscaping is planted elsewhere on the site. So um, it's there, it's just not along those areas of the, of the foundation. Um, so those, those, are, those uh, materials are located elsewhere. Uh, and then the uh, last thing I want to mention is that um, Commissioner Cruz had emailed some comments about the plan to us, on, including um, one is uh, requesting that the applicants add parking blocks on the north side of the building where those spaces about the building. And um, so that's something that um, the, the applicants will more than likely do just to protect the building from uh, cars running into it. So uh, we would recommend including parking blocks on the north side of the building where uh, the space abuts the building. And then Commissioner Cruz also had some uh, comments about the emergency access and questions. And uh, the fire department has reviewed the emergency access plans and has recommended approval of the plans uh, based on the layout of the emergency vehicle access. Um, and then finally, Commissioner Cruz had uh, recommended um, additional notes on the asphalt paving that uh, were discussed at the January 11th meeting. So um, I let him know that I would be sending the engineering division those notes on the asphalt paving specifications. Uh, so with that, our recommendation is uh, approval of the site plan. And if the site plan is recommended for approval, it will then proceed to the Township Board of Trustees for final action. Patrick? Um, is the project sponsor here? All right. Could you give us your name and address for the record, please? Good evening. My name is Josh Sullivan with True Storage. Uh, we're based out of Manchester, New Hampshire, 670 North Commercial Street in Manchester. And with me, I have Tim Curry of DLZ Engineers, who's a civil engineer on the project. I don't actually have to get that close to the mic. It's pretty, pretty good at picking your. All right, so. it is. Some of them are kind of touchy. I know. know. Yeah, but I just thought I'd let you know. Well, thank you for coming. Do you have anything to add to what Patrick said? No, Patrick um, had a great description. Like he said, we've been very responsive to comments, trying to get on them as soon as we can, just to be as cooperative as possible with, with the township. Um, and we're looking forward to the opportunity to develop our facility here. Uh, happy to answer any questions if there are some. Add Mr. Curry? No? Okay. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Um, if you don't mind hanging out in case we have some questions. All right, I'm going to start down at this end this time. Commissioner Watkins. Yeah, super quick. Um, like the project, I know this came up before, but was there a BEA on this site? I think the previous use was 
uh, had some heavy metals that were used in the site. Um, any, any discussion on the BEA phase one, phase two? Yep, that, that came up completely clean. We did have a phase one site investigation done um, as well as looking at certain areas that were suspect and they all came back clean. So there's no environmental concerns here. All right, Commissioner Okan. I'm good, thank you. Commissioner Singh. Uh, no questions. All right, Commissioner Weber. I, have any, I don't have any questions, thank you. All right, Commissioner Foster. No questions, no comments, thank you. And Commissioner Janowski. Plans, response, everything, all the conditions, but except for the parking lot. Okay, excellent. I just have a question. Can you guys put in a car wash as part of this? <laughs> <laughs> Because if we had if we had more room on site, we would. We actually do partner with car washes on some really? of our sites across okay. the country. I'm, unfortunately, we don't have the room here, but maybe we'll find another site and Darn. do that there. Part of that vacant lot next door. <laughs> <laughs> We're joking because we have we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of storage facilities and park and um, car washes come before us recently. So interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, very good. Does anybody want to make a motion? Does anybody not want to make a motion? <laughs> I'll make the motion. Okay. I move to recommend approval of the site plan for a mini warehouse establishment use on parcel number 0039900080707, including the proposed modification for foundation landscaping as the request meets the site plan criteria of the Canton Township Zoning Ordinance, subject to all state, county, and township requirements. Or, All right, we have a motion on the table by Commissioner Weber and support <coughs> by Commissioner Foster. Any further discussion? Sorry that mine wasn't as dramatic as Commissioner Watkins. Yeah, really, you're going to have to practice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Commissioner Okan, could you please call yes. the vote? Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Janowski? Yes. Commissioner Okan, yes. Commissioner Singh? Yes. Commissioner Watkins? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. And Chairwoman Zuber? Yes. All right. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Patrick, what are the next steps? Uh, next steps will be uh, the site plan will proceed to the Township Board of Trustees for a final action, and that will most likely be at the March 28th meeting. Okay, excellent. Very good. And we have uh, item three on our agenda is zoning ordinance text amendment. Patrick, tell us all about it. Right. Well, uh, at uh, our previous meetings, uh, going back all the way to October, uh, we've discussed the uh, sign or not sign ordinance, uh, fence ordinance. Um, and every month, uh, we make uh, we make more progress. And uh, at the February 5th Planning Commission meeting, uh, we discussed uh, fences in the front yard <coughs> setback of corner lots along major roads. Um, and what we were looking at was to uh, consider whether to allow six foot high privacy fences along major roads where there's a corner <coughs> lot of an interior subdivision or a site condominium street where you've got a house that is right at the corner. And so um, the uh, recommendation from the Planning Commission at that time was um, to recommend text allowing a six foot high fence to be located uh, between the rear lot line and 15 feet behind the front corner of that side of the house so that um, a house at a major street intersection would have, say, uh, like Canton Center Road, along Canton Center Road could have a six foot high privacy fence along that side of the road, but up to the point 15 feet behind the corner, the front corner of that side of the house so that as one enters the subdivision or the development, the fence doesn't overtake the house or create a fortress-like effect. Um, so. Uh, we're collecting a lot of these recommendations from the Planning Commission along the way, and uh, eventually we'll have these incorporated into the text of the zoning ordinance as well as graphics. Uh, there are a couple other items to go through before we're ready to present a draft ordinance to the Planning Commission. Um, and one of these items is um, fences that are in rear yards and side yard fences between two residential lots. And for these types of fences, there's two areas to deal with. Um, the first is that for fences in the rear yard, uh, on residential lots, rear yards can have six foot high fences. 
Um, and then when it gets into the side yard, it has to drop down to four feet. Uh, one of the exceptions is that um, an, the, a fence can be six foot high going from the rear of someone's property line to the rear of their house or to the rear of their neighbor's house, whichever is set farther back. So in some cases with uh, neighbors uh, that have different rear elevations of their home or they've put additions on, some neighbors that want, or some residents that want to get the full effect of the ordinance, they will build a six foot high privacy fence and then in their rear yard, at what appears to be like at a random point, it just drops down to four feet. And the reason is it drops down to four feet at the point of their neighbor's rear elevation, not necessarily their rear elevation. So the, the Zoning Board of Appeals occasionally gets variance requests for people that want relief from that requirement so that they can put the fence in their entire rear yard. Um, and I'll read the text of the ordinance uh, that regulates this. It reads, uh, all fences and walls constructed or installed between lots shall not exceed a height of six feet above the average grade of the two adjoining lots and shall not extend closer to the front lot line than the rear building line of the building thereon or to the rear building line of the adjoining lots. Uh, and then it continues, uh, fences or walls constructed or installed between lots may be extended up to but not into the required front yard area provided they do not exceed four feet above the average grade of the two adjoining lots. Um, so the first item that uh, we want to recommend changing is to allow a six foot high fence to be located in a rear yard, regardless of where the adjacent property owner has their house. And one of the issues this causes is that if all of the houses are built at the same rear elevation and somebody builds a six foot high fence in their rear yard, as soon as the neighbor puts an addition on their rear, the rear of their house, that fence then becomes non-conforming because of something that their neighbor did. And the fence ordinance doesn't allow reconstruction of non-conforming structures. So that puts, puts that fence in peril that at the end of its useful life and it's taken down, it can't be replaced as is. So we recommend uh, removing the restriction of having it to the rear line of the adjoining lot and just make it the rear of the house of the yard itself. Um, the other item that we recommend addressing is uh, side yard fences. Uh, currently the zoning or the fence ordinance limits the height of fences in the side yard to four feet high. And occasionally the Zoning Board of Appeals gets variance applications from people that want to go a little bit farther uh, toward the front of the house with a six foot high fence. Uh, recently, the Zoning Board of Appeals granted a variance for a homeowner to have a six foot high privacy fence in the side yard to conceal a side access door to uh, their garage. And in some cases, it's a side access door to the house, like a, a mudroom or a kitchen or something like that, or a three seasons room. Um, so in that particular case, the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, granted a variance provided that fence was located 16 and a half feet from the front corner of the house. So uh, based on the Planning Commission's above recommendation to allow certain corner lots to have a six foot high fence between the rear lot line and 15 feet behind the front of the house, uh, we recommend that a similar standard be considered for residential fences in a side yard. In other words, allowing a side yard fence to be six feet high um, up in, in the side yard, provided it's not higher than four feet if it's located within 15 feet of the front corner of the home. Um, and uh, in, the, in our report, we include several examples of six foot high fences that are located in side yards in the township. Um, some of the fences extend near the front of the home, but most are set back about 15 feet from the front corner of the house, just to illustrate what that regulation might look like if it were adopted in the text. Uh, and then finally, um, as, as we're dealing with rear yard fences and side yard fences uh, this evening, once there's general consensus on those, um, then we'll prepare some draft ordinance text and then continue with the uh, last section of the ordinance that addresses uh, interior street corner lot fences, which uh, will probably be the most difficult because there's such a variety of different fences on those interior corner lots. So we're saving the most difficult for last, but, um, but we're getting there. So that concludes our report and we'll be happy to take any questions. I have a question about the language of the ordinance that you didn't mention or you, you read, but you didn't, we're not talking about necessarily, but the first sentence where it says 
all, fence, all fences and walls constructed or installed between lots shall not exceed a height of six feet above the average grade of the two adjoining lots. Does that literally mean that somebody would have to like take spot elevations on all of the, the, the lots, the two adjoining lots, and, and decide it only go up six feet higher than that average? Um, I don't think it's been administered like that. I think it's just um, six feet um, above the average grade at that particular point. It, so it really shouldn't say average. It should just say grade. At the grade at the fence location. Because that just the seems like I'm sure, yeah, to build up the grade. Yeah. Yeah. People, I've seen people build up the grade. Yep, correct. Just well, so but. You, you move the grade up and then you can make your fence higher. Yeah, but that would be. That would be not in the spirit of the ordinance. I mean, how would you, I mean. But if we're not administering, if we're not enforcing this the way it's written, what's the point of having it in there? Exactly. Because it just seems like. It just seems to make it sound more difficult. <laughs> so I think um, when you're looking at a, a lot when, where the grade is similar, right? It's the same neighborhood, same, sorry, That's I'm right. almost hitting That's you. Right. Um, there really isn't an issue, right? And so you just look at what six feet is from the grade of the lot. And right. I think that's maybe what Patrick is sort of thinking about. But for instance, if there is um, a very hilly neighborhood and a neighbor's grade in their backyard might be six feet higher than yours and there's a slope and there's a, what do you call that, a swale or whatever that comes down, that in that circumstance, you might, Patrick might want the opportunity to say, okay, and we need to know what the average grade is between these two before we approve your fence. And so I, I don't know that I would necessarily strike the language because I think it's helpful in those circumstances, those extreme circumstances where you may actually need to know what the average between the two lots is when it's a very different grade between the two lots. And that would be on the onus of the homeowner to provide you that information. I do too. What's that? I think that's a little unreasonable to expect. That would require a topological survey, which is, you know. How do you get? How do you get that? How do you get that reading though? How First do you get of all, that you're not talking into your mic. But second of all, um, yeah, I don't mathematically, know. it's pretty easy. I don't know if it's taken off of because we, they have the height. The height of the houses. Do you use the same thing? The average grade. Right. Um, but you can just look at it, and I mean, it's. I mean, it's, it's not written to require a, a survey like you're talking about. It's just written to require an average calculation of the grade. And I so if they, if they are able to provide that to you, I don't, I don't think it's something that you want to get rid of because I think he's, he's right when he says people will just build up. If they want a higher fence, for instance, on another jurisdiction, I have a, a, <laughs> a homeowner who... Um, erected a six foot extension to the top of their fence because they didn't like their neighbors. And so, you know, I could see a scenario where a person will, I'm just, I'm gonna put in a four foot berm here and I'm gonna put my fence on top of that and it's six feet and my fence itself is not six feet but now I have a 10 foot fence. Well, first, so, of, all, first of all, if someone puts a four foot berm in their yard, a neighbor's gonna come out and complain to the township that they changed the elevation of her yard and all the water's draining into their yard. And I would hope the township would address that. I mean, I've seen that happen in other townships. So to say that the homeowner then has to go and take an average elevation of, its, of the grade just to put a fence in, I think is a little ridiculous. Also, I think that if you really read that, wouldn't that mean that sometimes you would only get to have a four foot high fence? And that just sort of defeats the purpose of having allowing for a six foot high fence. If we're looking at the average height, you know, if, if one lot is way higher than the other, and you know, the but the fence happens to be in a low area, do we? I mean, I I have to draw this out to figure out which way I'm going. But but wouldn't that mean that sometimes a six foot fence isn't going to be permitted? And is that really true that we've ever said no, somebody can't put up a six foot fence because the average grades are, are so different? There may have been occasions where the, the fence inspector in the building division may have required a lower fence if, if it's been a substantial grade change. 
Um, I'm not sure how many times they've dealt with neighbors actually changing the grade versus just the natural grade that occurs on a property where the slope between properties is such that building a fence at six feet actually has an appearance of being more than six feet based on that average grade between those two lots. I'm trying to think which part of the Canton has grade variation of, of that level. Canton is fairly that, flat. Go up to the uh, whatever, well, I don't even know what direction it is. By the North, north e northwest corner, kind of like up, up by the cider mill. Goddard. By Danton, you mean Danton, Warren area somewhere there? Further out, but by there's a bunch of nurseries out on Ford Road, I think, further out where it ends. And there's some, there's subdivision to the side that has an inc incline. Well, it's dirt roads, and there's an incline there. Yeah, it's up at, at uh, Warren and Napier, I think. Yeah. So those subdivisions yeah. there, the fences are not even allowed as per the subdivisions Probably. rules and laws. Well, I think I think that. I guess I think I think. I don't know. I think we need to think about that because because it, it, are we really trying to say that sometimes we wouldn't want a four foot, sometimes we wouldn't want a six foot fence when many people put six foot fences in their yard so that you can't walk up to it and see over it, you know. And if we say, well, gee, the grade is so it's such that you can only have a four foot high fence, it doesn't seem fair. But I don't know. Point of order, Madam Chair. So <clears throat> I think. At least I'm thinking along the lines of how do we standardize and stratify the ordinance so that it works for everybody, I think is the key. And, and I, in my opinion, I, I think it was added in order to be able to do so. Um, it gives no other person an unfair advantage over someone else, be it a person who has a two-foot burn that's there already when, you're, when the house was constructed versus someone else who is two houses down who doesn't have it there. So I think, I don't know, my thoughts are like, we, we want to be able to, to create a level playing field and allow everyone to be able to play by the same set of rules and not have someone have an eight foot fence versus a six foot fence or eight feet of obstruction rather than six feet of obstruction. But it, in the same token, if you have a, you know, a grade and then the, the property line happens to be at the lower point, then they don't get, they get to have an eight foot high fence. And I, I think we're saying the same thing. I think, yeah, we want to figure out what, what, what stratify, what standardizes this so that it's a, it's a level playing field, no pun intended. For, Again, uh, in, in some cases where there's not a drainage issue, there have been uh, property owners that build a retaining wall or, um, you know, an earth berm where the elevation just drops off. And if it doesn't affect stormwater, then I think in cases like that, the fence inspector may look at it and say, you know, if you're a couple feet higher than the neighbor next to you, then you may only get a four foot fence. But um, we can ask the inspector in what scenarios he's looked at using that. And we can also check other um, municipal ordinances to see how they, how they deal with and contemplate this average grade issue. And we can come back next month or the month after with just some scenarios where we've seen it and how it's been tackled. Yeah, I mean, as, as somebody who's had to calculate average, the average, you know, you were talking about this before, Gordon, with the, you know, an elevation and the average height of the house, it can be a mess trying to figure that out, even with a topographical survey. So, so the city record doesn't reflect that when somebody apply for a fence permit. The city plans or record of that particular lot doesn't have the grade level height or measurements in the plans. There's the GIS, but it's not going to be to the level of detail that you would have to get. Like a topographical survey would be much more detailed. For our, uh, for our subdivisions and site condo lots, um, they have a plot plan that does show their final grades. So in many cases where uh, there's a subdivision or a site condo where um, there's been monuments and there's been final grades, um, even going back several years, those plot plans will show those grades at that time. And a lot of those grades haven't changed substantially if people have just kind of maintained the yard the way it was. So in many cases, we have that on record. Um, in other cases, like meets and bounds lots, we may not. Most of those grade levels are on the record, and the few which are not there, uh, an inspector can look at it, or a survey can be ordered, I guess. I think so. And we can ask the inspector how they deal with that, if they do like a, a pre-inspection before, if it's a meets and bounds lot where there aren't grades. 
Well, well as the fence inspector, when you guys get, when, when the building department gets one of these applications, does the fence inspector go out and look at the property before the fence is, I'm assuming they go out and look at it before the fence is erected, correct? Uh, we actually don't work with the, um, the permit, so I wouldn't, I don't know the answer to that, but we'll, we'll find out what the, what the procedures are when they get an application. That would tell, tell you then whether you have a significant, significant difference in grade level. I mean, at that point, then you can address the problem of, well, someone's built a natural, built up an unnatural berm here that significantly changes the grade. I mean, I, you know, I, I get the point that people will put a berm in or, or whatever, but um, again, that, by doing that, that creates other issues in the neighborhood that just go downstream, no, you know, uh, literally and figuratively. So. All right, well, we'll like, wait for you to come back with some follow-up information about that, but um, let's move to the point of the, the discussion that I sidetracked here. Um, how do we feel about the um, the rear building line slash rear building line of the adjoining lots? That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. Yeah, it seems really unfair to punish somebody because their neighbor built a sunroom or whatever. But, mm -hmm. but you, and you've seen a lot of these, I imagine, before the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. Um, so there's consensus on, on allowing uh, taller fences up to a point within 15 feet. Yeah. Yep. And then the side yard fences, anybody have any? Any feedback on that part? I think it's good. It's a change. It's good. Okay. Yeah, it's make it same. You know, all the base experts. It's better. I, I don't like seeing a six foot high fence all the way up to the front of the house. So yeah, I don't right. Know. Yeah, I think as long as we're consistent with we mm -hmm. allow those. Yep. Okay. Very good. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. A lot easier than last time. Don created the problem for you. I know. I, <laughs> everyone always says that. <laughs> That's why we have several meetings. This is not an easy ordinance, and there's going to be things that come up that we didn't anticipate, like average grade, but this is good. Got to stress test it. Grade. <laughs> That's what you're trying to do, isn't it? Right. Wrong? Just eliminate. <laughs> trying to put the ZBA out of business. Eliminate the docket. All right. Did we give you enough direction? Yep. Okay. We'll be back next month with more. Awesome. All right. So we have a master plan report, I gather. Karen? Hello. Hello. How is everyone this evening? Um, okay. So. Um, just to summarize the, the, the memo that was in your packet, dated March 6, 2023, um, our fun updates for you. <laughs> so um, we're continuing to get feedback from uh, the public um, in your, which should have come into uh, with the monthly report in February was the community survey summary report. So that gives you an idea as to um, some of the responses that we've heard from the public uh, through the community survey. Um, that was also posted on the township website for people to, to see and get an idea of what, uh, what, what the consensus is in the, in the neighborhoods. So in addition to that, we are um, moving forward with the, um, excuse me, scheduling the stakeholder discussions. And this is uh, set up so as to capture those demographic groups or those community groups that were underrepresented in the community survey. So what we noted is that the, there was a lack of representation from teen groups. So we want to find out what, and we've talked to them a little bit already through the, the high school, but uh, with the block being upstairs, um, we wanted to schedule a special discussion to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we're looking at real estate agents and developers. What are they hearing from the people? What are they hearing about those who are wanting to come into Canton or those who are moving out of Canton? What are they hearing uh, on the ground? So those are some of the groups that, that we're looking at um, uh, talking to a little bit more specifically. Um, 
and I go into a little bit more detail on that in the, in the memo. But um, so that's one group, and then the second group is going to be topic-based. So we want to talk to people and individuals, and I sent out mass emails that went out in the focus that we're trying to get people who are interested in these things in Canton to come talk to us. So do you have interest in transportation? Do you have interest in um, land use and development, uh, natural preservation, and uh, sustainable design? So we've received feedback from a number of people, well over 50 people have responded and said that they want to participate in those, in those discussions, which is a, a phenomenal return rate. Um, so it's taken some time to coordinate with, with everybody and finding out where to place each person because some of them are interested in all the topics, but we gotta, we gotta put them where, um, where their background and where their interests lie so that way we can have a robust discussion. So those uh, dates haven't been finalized yet, but we're expected those to take place mid to late March. Uh, the advisory board continues to meet. Uh, they're going to be meeting this Friday, or I'm sorry, this Thursday. Um, they met in February to finalize the mission, vision, value statements and to provide some more feedback to consultants and to staff. So um, the consultants are putting some final tweaks on those, and so those will be coming to you in a separate email probably later this week for you to look at, think about, digest, provide any feedback from us, and then we'll discuss them a little bit more in depth at the April meeting. Um, we continue to move forward with uh, Redevelopment Ready's community certification. So the Zoning Board of Appeals adopted their bylaws last month, which is very exciting. Um, and then we continue to move forward with our um, amendments to the site plan review process. So we have a new uh, planner that came on board last week. Um, so he's taking a, a crack at some of the draft language that we had uh, showed to you the previous month. So we'll bring that back to you in April and we'll continue those discussions. Okay. Um, and last month we discussed uh, the possibility of having uh, a separate planning commission meeting to go over some of the master plan items. Um, we don't have anything uh, in depth to bring to you this month, so this is the, the update um, this month. So we won't have a special meeting in, in March per our, our discussion, that we won't have one if we don't need to have one. Um, but they're going to start wrapping up um, quickly, so we, will, we are anticipating having a special meeting in April. Any questions? Wonderful, thank you. thank you. Now is the time when we open this up for public comment. So, any member of the public like to make a comment? I think there's just one here. You're saying no? <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, anybody else on the board have anything? Move to adjourn. All right. Oh, <laughs> that was a peppy response over there. All right. So we have a motion by Commissioner Ocon and support by Commissioner Jan Janowski. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you all. Is this the shortest planning commission meeting? I think it's the shortest on record. I don't know. If it's